would you kindly join me for another episode of Bioshock? This is Jewel Smith playing Bioshock the Collection on a PlayStation 4. I cannot live stream to either Twitch or to YouTube. So I have to upload my gameplay in video clips. So I appreciate you being here. We are in the winery in the farmer's market level. And I am supposed to be making something called the Lazarus Vector. So let's do it. The Lazarus Vector requires seven chlorophyll, seven enzyme samples, seven distilled water. That's what we've been gathering around the farmer's market. And that is going to save the trees that Andrew Ryan is trying to destroy so that we cannot breathe down here under the water in rapture. I do need one of these. Yes, I'm running low on those. I think I can also make... Oh, that's pistol rounds. That's back in Arcadia. Alright, so I gotta get out of here. I think there's a few little areas I have not explored here yet. Right there. And over here. And there's also downstairs. Something that we found in the last episode and we need to take a look at. Right here is the director's commentary film reel. We've been looking at those, so let's look at this one. It'll take about 10 or 15 minutes. They seem to run around 12-ish minutes long. So if you don't want to see the director's commentary, because it does contain spoilers, you can skip ahead in the video. Otherwise, grab your popcorn. Let's watch. Nailing the perfect marriage of story to gameplay is a science that many developers still struggle with today. Bioshock has left an indelible mark on gaming narrative that can be seen and felt in many modern releases, but Irrational's motto remained from the beginning, don't start with the story, start with the gameplay. A lot of fans probably wonder about the process you go through in writing the story and the design for a game like Bioshock. You've talked about how you know it evolved over time and what eventually ships is very different than your initial vision. Do you guys write like a script or a design document for the game and that becomes sort of the Bible that everyone drives towards or, or do you iterate much more? It's different for every game. Like System Shock 2, I wrote I, you know, I went back to it recently, I wrote a design document and like we started that project in September and the design document I saw was dated like October or something, so I had, like in a month like I wrote the design document and it, it didn't change. A lot of it, you know, got expanded upon, but the basic design really didn't change on that. Where on, where on Bioshock, I think it evolved in real time much more. Like the, we had a pretty substantial design shift like a year before the ship date. For um, Bioshock? Bioshock, yeah. It, it got to be much more about the experience of being in Rapture than about being in your character sheet. And so the game evolved more towards that experiential kind of thing and making sure every idea was expressed in the world as well as just on your character sheet. So before you'd have a lot of things like, oh, I'm doing fire damage or electrical damage, but that was sort of a number flying off ahead versus you know the whole notion of like, you know, uh, you there's barrels and you light them on fire and then you can pick them up and throw them. But you'd have stats coming off characters and all that yeah, stuff. Much more so. Oh really? Oh, and that really? evolved, you know, sort of we did a, a design shift, but I don't know how well that got documented. I think we were moving so fast that it just we were just sort of changing things, you know, you know, rain down the laying down the tracks as we went, right ahead of us. And the same with the screenplay, you know, the screenplay. The screenplay say there is no screenplay. It's a yeah. bunch of you know, probably Excel files and fragments of Word documents that I'd write and I'd go to recording sessions and I'd rewrite on the fly once I hear the actor perform. Because once the actor takes on it, you listen to their voice and you say, you know, what you wrote doesn't really matter. Like, what is this guy, what is the right thing for this actor playing this role to be saying? 
So I tend to do a lot of rewriting in the session. And then like you have a bug late at night where somebody says, oh, this doesn't make any sense. And you're like, oh God, you have to write a new audio log and try to get the actor back in. Or you figure out how to, what's the best way to get this idea across. Yeah. And is it an audio log? Is it a poster on the wall? Is, yeah. it, is it a piece of text that pops up on the screen? You know, that's always dependent on how much time you have and what actor availability is. So, you know, the plans sort of fall apart. Um, I think we've, we've worked on that a bunch since on the new project we're working on where, you know, we're, we are trying to document things a lot better and, and keep things a lot more logical. But the train was running so fast on Bioshock that we just sort of... I mean, we, early on, we got the, the Andrew Ryan scene in, like we'd said before, and that was kind of like the keystone. Like, we're going to put a lot of work into this, so this can't change. Everything that happens before or after that don't really involve a lot of departments working together to make a scene those things are very malleable, and if you need to change audio logs to represent a story, if you need to add lines or take away lines, that's, that's very doable. And I think for a while we even had like text-to-speech. We even did that, in, I remember for Infinite with Booker and Elizabeth and all their dialogue, yeah. and that really didn't work very well, because you'd have these dramatic scenes, and it'd be like, Elizabeth, do you need, do we need to go to Comstock, and it, it just, yeah. just it, 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 was, it almost had no part, value yeah, as far bad. as I was concerned. <laughs> Rachel, hold on a head. Says you were you're looking for an invite to the fisheries. Nuts, I say. But if in your head's up to the wharf master's office and find old Peach a research camera, maybe I could manage an invite. Ken has so much of, you know, these games in his head, and you're sort of, you know, you can keep it all straight or try to with all the different things and changes. But from the team perspective, Sean, I mean, how because this is evolving and Ken's thinking his head about how this all ties together, um, how does the team sort of keep up with, you know, w what the whole game is going to look like? There's a lot of specifics that can change. For instance, um, Atlas used to have a southern draw. Right. And then, you know, we, we recast to uh, the Irish. And we, 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 actually, we actually cast an actor, wrote the lines, uh -huh. did the whole thing, and realized that people hated that character and they distrusted him from the first start. So. We, how to rewrite him, recast him, redo everything. Yeah, from a team perspective, you kind of get a sense on which things are going to be really volatile and that you probably want to push off till later because if you work on it now, it might change. Larger themes don't tend to change too much, meaning we knew we were in Rapture, we knew we had big daddies, we knew we had little sisters, we knew we had splicers, we knew what the arc of the story was about Jack coming into Rapture and the, the specifics of this radio log versus that radio log didn't really affect anyone outside the, the audio team at that time because we could still build the environment. We still knew what the environment was. We still knew what the animations were. There are areas you learn just by working in the same space for a while that this this scene, I'm not touching this yet because I know that it, it's, it's going to get changed a lot. I think these themes are pretty nailed down, so I'm going to focus the team on, on getting these things done. I won't leave you twisting in the wind. We're going to need to draw around a height. The audio logs were, you know, a great part of the game and something that if you're a true fan, I mean, people really go in, go in and listen to those and piece that all together. But I imagine there's a lot of work that goes into deciding, you know, well, this, this is better for an audio log versus game dialogue and, you know, there's the act of sort of cutting back and sort of saying, you know, we need to be clear about what the narrative is for the game. What was that process like? I mean, the audio logs, were there things you added at the end or were those, you know, ideas that you had for the game but then said, hey, maybe we'd demote these a little bit and make them audio logs? As Sean was saying, there's sort of a hierarchy of expense that yeah. you, you have to face, and so any ideas you have to get across, especially as you start playing the game, you realize, well, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't make sense. You have to figure out how you can introduce that idea. And generally, as the train is moving, you try to think of cheaper and cheaper ways to get those ideas across. If it's less important, it goes to an audio log. If it's less important, it goes to a poster on the wall. Um, well, there's also characters that you can bring in that have audio logs that aren't, you know, Atlas, Tenenbaum, those are your big ones. Uh, you can bring in somebody to do a short, you know, a few different audio logs. It's a character that some players may not even find, but right. it adds a little bit of depth to, to Rapture. Um, and, and, and it also, like, usually characters, each character generally is a, about a certain idea. And they're not, we don't just sort of come up with characters, like we have an idea problem that we right. need to solve. And so let's introduce a character who, who's this guy, yeah. and he will be the guy who sort of shepherds you through that, I, that idea. Julie, my dear, I am trying to run a business here. 
You want to spend time with my honeybees? Well, I'm gonna have to start charging you for the pleasure. Oh, we heard that one. One more time and find you lolling out there amongst my hives. In previous I'm episodes. As to your question, yes, my days in beekeeping school are a blur. But I do seem to remember something about that enzyme you keep blabbing on. Ah, and that's what we were. So that's what we were gathering in the, the last game, episode. And, you know, writing things, rewriting things. Those were there bees. things with the original Bioshock that you, you've always been surprised that more people didn't pick up on? Or was there something that, you know, a, a connection to a character you thought was really going to resonate with people, which, you know, didn't? Anything like that? No, it's the opposite. Okay. Um, I was amazed. I don't know how you felt, but I was amazed how many people connected to the Would You Kindly yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. because I think it was a real, when I wrote that speech, I don't think anybody on the team was like, oh my God, this is like really this or that. And I don't think I really had any sense that people were gonna connect to it. I think we ended up sort of over time finding more ways to support the notion throughout the game. Yep. Um, and I don't think I really, until I heard Pat put together the 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 revelation moment, you know, yeah. where it's like, you know, where you had all the bits that Atlas had said to you uh -huh. in the past building up and then there was a visual that went along with that. That's when I realized it was gonna be a really powerful moment. But even so, I still was, did I think people were really going to connect to it or really even understand it? Because it's pretty out there. Um, yeah. And that it was meta commentary, too. I think that completely, yeah. like, I think I thought, like, oh, it's kind of meta, cool. And but people connected to it in a much bigger oh, way. Oh, yeah, the choice and understanding, and also just, you know, being able to kind of roll back and think of all those other moments throughout the game. And it's, you know, yeah. a great revelation like that. They're few and far between in games where you sort of, like, then you want to play it again, you're just like, oh wow, really, that does all make sense, right? Yeah, I mean, I think as a team, we were definitely proud of what we had done, but at, up till that point, you know, SWAT 4 was the biggest game that we worked on, and we had no expectation of that anybody would pick this up, or even like Bioshock cosplay. I remember the first cosplay I saw with a guy in the big daddy suit, and his little daughter was in the kitchen cabinet. I think that was the first one I saw. I was like, whoa, people know this stuff that's insane yeah people were building these outfits and yeah you know, that's only that only expanded with with infinite i mean that sort of went crazy with infinite yeah. with people cosplaying elizabeth and lutesses and booker it meant a lot of pe to people and I, I i don't think that's something we ever saw coming and we're deeply you know we're deeply grateful for it because it's one thing to make a game and get good reviews and, and stuff like that it's another thing to have things that people are having their th weddings themed around it right. and their and their tattoos and naming their children after characters. You can't plan for that, and I think the only way that could happen is if you know you just make something that's something that you're deeply in love with and passionate about. We, I can say we were. It was something we were, there's a lot of passion. True words have not been about. spoken. But we, we didn't know people were gonna. That applies to anything, writing, Would you kindly? artwork. Would you kindly? If, if you do oh, it with, with total love and passion, Familiar. other people will feel that, and that's what'll make it meaningful. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Part of the challenge with that, though, is when people love fiction so much and they dive into, you know, every word written in every audio log and try and connect all the fiction, make sure it all makes sense. Are there any things from that game that you sort of look back and it's like, oh, wow, like we didn't explain this and we should have, or things that fans have misinterpreted over the years? There are things we think that we could that we did that should have or shouldn't have been in the game. Like I, I, I was never a fan of having two endings, and the I think that's the, where the publisher was asking you to sort of have a. That end, was the right? one thing that Two K, and they were very hands off. That was the one thing they insisted on, and I, I it's not something I really thought was a good idea because they're still limited, even though they're multiple, they're right. still limited, and so that was something that we ended up doing. One of the endings was far better than the other one. There's no, there's no, it's clear that I was much more interested in the happier ending with the little sisters than I was with the nuclear submarine I think that was, ending. I'm sure yeah. part of it was the idea that, you know, if this game is, if you're making a choice throughout it, I'm sure when some people are like, oh, well then there has to, it has to be a, a payoff, right? Right, except the game was really about exactly. lack of choice. choice. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, not being yeah. a choice. So, exactly. so yeah. that, that always struck me as a tension that was weird, but, you know, look, at the end of the day, they were putting up a lot of money and, right. you know, so I, I can't really complain. They weren't dictatorial at all during the development, so yeah, that was the one thing. But I, that's a game that I wouldn't have put the boss battle in, the final boss battle. <laughs> like we, we seem to end up doing that over and over and over again. Every time we start a project, I'm like, I'm never going to do that again. We're never going to do that again, and we end up doing it. Right. We're not good at boss battles, and that you know, you're fighting that guy, and look, this is yeah. the naked dude. It, it just, it yeah. just doesn't work. Totally makes sense. Uh -huh. But um, and it works really pretty well up till then. But then it it doesn't it just doesn't work. That boss battle is silly.
All right, well, there we go. The director's commentary from the farmer's market level of Bioshock the collection, the first Bioshock game. We have made the Lazarus vector so we can save the trees and thus the oxygen here. Where do we need to go? There's this area here it doesn't seem to uh, be explored. Hearing something. Hey, Bella, don't you want to take a walk with me? I am really going to need to buy some health kit. There are a lot of assholes in this winery. So where have I not explored that it's saying I haven't been? Over here? There's something over here I haven't seen? Okay, this must be it. What's back here? Just triggered. <laughs> I think she triggered the uh, the security camera that I had hacked, and now she's getting her ass kicked. That's fine. Well, I did it. Save me the bullets. down here, see what else we find. Cigarettes, some more cigarettes. Bunch more distilled water. Don't know if we need it for anything else in the U invent machine, but all right. Sure, health station. Sure. Cigarettes. Oh, lock boxes. Nice. Oh, I think I just grabbed some cigarettes and it took a little bit of my health away. Bodies in <laughs> in the cellar. Oh. What's that? I smell something nasty.
one of the bullets hit the barrel and it was leaking leaking wine it looked like all right let's get the heck out of here how do we get the heck out of here stairs up okay I should heal again, though. In the theater, a woman gets used to attention. I'm a star, not you! Man, where do they keep coming from? Oh, Mr. Cohen. <laughs> I... Get out of here. Jerk. <laughs> now there's one little sister in this level and I definitely want to get the little sister because I want that Adam. There is a a plasmid that has something to do with bees. Back in the beehive area. I want to get that. But I need to get some atom to spend on it. Alright, so how do I get out of here? I the Lord. Oh, where'd he come from? Oh shit, speaking of big daddies. Is he upstairs? Alright, this is where we came in. Okay. Oh, my little bot is stuck. He's stuck. Uh, Reactivate him. Maybe he won't be stuck anymore. Come on. Help me fight the big daddy, little bot. Alright, where's the circus of values? Because I need to get some health kits. Looks like it's right around here behind me. Oh, it sounds like he's right behind me. Are they gonna see me if I sit here? Because I've got invisibility. There you go. Go after him. Yeah. He didn't even see me. That's excellent. That's why I love hacking and everything. Oh shit. I'm hearing Mr. Bubbles. Where's Mr. Bubbles? I should save. Hang on. Let me save. Oh. And this will be an excellent time to remind you that I am giving away the book 1000 Steampunk Creations for the month of Bioshocktober. To enter that giveaway, just leave a comment on any Bioshocktober video. Halloween is the deadline. That'll be the last day you can leave comments. And if you want to enter the drawing more than once, then comment on more than one video. I have no idea where Mr. B and the little girl, little sister, are located here. Where am I at? Okay. 
Okay, I want to go look at the... There we go. I need to buy some health kit. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will get some more of those. More of those. All right. Oh, uh, where is it? I can. Where is it? I can hear them. Where are they? Are they out in the hallway? They sound so close. Oh shit, that was a Houdini splicer, you guys. When you see little splashes like that in the water, that's an invisible Houdini splicer. Running through the water. He seems to have gone away though. Yeah, let's take a picture of this asshole. <laughs> Screw you, asshole. Andrew Ryan asks you a simple question. Are you a man or a slave? See, right in here, in the apiary, there's this insect swarm plasmid, and I want that. But I need to get some atom for it. So I gotta go figure out. Now I was hearing... I was hearing a big daddy in here. So you can hear him, you can hear him going. So does that mean he like did he spawn somewhere in here? Because this isn't next to anything else. Is he downstairs? There's that phone again that we can't do anything with. Is he down here somewhere? Sure sounds like he is, doesn't he? The sound is so messed up in here though. It's hard to know where the sounds are coming from. It sure sounds like he's down here though. down here. He is down here. Holy shit. Come on, 
one, yeah, little sister with multiple subjects. Okay, grenade launcher. I've never used one of these heat seeking RPGs, so I have no idea what's gonna happen when I do this. No, no, no. Yeah, I want your atom. I need to go get that B plasmid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. There's only supposed to be one little sister on this level. Now, it doesn't mean that big daddies won't respawn and wander around looking for a little sister to take care of. my little pretties. Alright, electric buck. I keep searching that dude over and over and over again and he keeps having electric buck that I can't pick up. You think I'd learn my lesson? <laughs> My pretties, fly! Okay. And now I have the atom. I should be able to go in. And get that. B plasmid. I hope I have enough atom for it. There we go. Alright, Insect Swarm releases a swarm of stinging insects that attack multiple enemies. That sounds like a lot of fun. Preview, it says. Sure, let's take a preview. Unleash insects against groups of enemies. Attack lots of enemies at the same time. Excellent. Sure. Nothing clears the room like swarms of stinging hornets. But where are we going to put it? Okay. Um, here's the thing. Winter Blast is probably one of my favorite plasmids. It's very handy, though. Uh, after you freeze people and you kill them, you can't loot their bodies. That's kind of a bummer. Hypnotize Big Daddy. Super helpful for when you don't feel like fighting a Big Daddy or you need a Big Daddy to help you fight something else. Telekinesis. Super handy for grabbing objects that are hard to reach. Been using that quite a bit. Electro bolts. Well, I don't use those to disable turrets. I use the winter blast instead. However, electro bolt is the only thing you can use on those like locked doors that are have a little electronic lock that you have to zap to get the door open. Uh, the uh, security bullseye is very cool because it basically sends the security turrets and security cameras and everything, the security bots go after someone else instead of you, but you don't have to hack everything in order to make that happen. Now I don't mind doing the hacking. Um, this is very useful at times. I have used it a few times, but uh, let's, let's trade out that one just so we can try out the, uh, the bee swarm instead. Against groups 
lots of enemies. I have heard that the bee swarm is really good to use on a big daddy. Of course, we don't seem to be having too many problems killing big daddies. We've been killing plenty <laughs> throughout all of these episodes. Uh, okay, vending expert reduces prices in vending machines. Medical expert. Um, sure, why not? Let's just get it. But I don't think I'm going to use it to replace any of these. Not yet. Yeah, that one's pretty handy. And that one's pretty handy as well. So since I do a lot of hacking, I'm just going to leave that. But I've got it if I want it. Alright, we have bee hands. Ooh, look at our bee hand. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. Alright, so what do we got to do now? We need to get the heck out of here. Go back to Arcadia. But there's this little area here we haven't explored. So let's go explore it. It's going to be straight ahead. More or less. What weapon do I have equipped? Yeah, that'll work. Uh, stick with the bee hand for now. And we're back in the farmer's market. that does. Well, that'll take care of a group. Yeah. Pretty nice. I like it. <laughs> nice. I like it very much. Okay, I have to go this way. This way to go out, but I want to search over here where I haven't been yet. I don't want to miss anything in here. I'm going to go back to my freezy hand. Just in case I got to freeze this, uh, Where is it? Can I get... It saw me there for a second. Can I get over this? Hey! Look at me! Oh! Should I auto hack or just try to hack? Let's try to hack. I'm pretty good with this sometimes. All right, let's clear a path. That'll slow it down. There we go. Now it's on our side. Oh, hey, crawl space door. Oh, that's delightful. That's just peachy. That's all we got in here. Just got people hanging on meat hooks in the freezer. Okay, sure. What have we got here? Oh, we have a safe we can hack. And a lockbox to search. Excellent! Ooh, that 
That's an A plus picture right there. All right. Oh, we can do this one. This shouldn't be too bad. Put famous last words. Yes, of course. Famous last words. It said it was not that hard, but it sure looked hard, didn't it? We did it. All right, armor piercing pistol rounds, $49, and some kerosene. I cannot carry any more armor piercing pistol rounds. Yeah, I don't seem to use those much. They're great for using on the turrets and the security bots and stuff. And the big daddies, too, I would imagine, but. corner back here. Bunch of cheese wheels. If this was Skyrim I could eat those for health. All right Circus of Values. Hey there Circus of Values. Welcome to the Circus Ooh. of Values. Oh it is time. I've been playing for about 45 minutes. There's my alarm. Which means I have to say goodbye for now. Thank you so much for being here. Leave a like, subscribe, tell your friends. You know how this works. Let's see. Maybe I can get the heck out of this level. I think I've just explored, finished exploring the one little area I hadn't been in yet. Let's stock up on some health kits. Uh, let's stock up on some buckshot. Sure. I think I have enough film. Let's check it out. Yeah, this was a little area I hadn't explored yet. Now we should be able to get out of here. All right, this is where we came in. And there's a big daddy right there looking for a little sister. What's in here? What are all these goodies? I don't remember seeing this before. Oh, I don't have any electric buck. Let's I thought we were going to be able to get out of here. Well, we should be able to get out of here pretty soon. I'm just, I'm busy looting things. I'm busy looting what all is in here. Didn't we already search? Ah, all right. Yeah, so we are, but we are very close to the exit of this. We need to go back to Arcadia, save the trees, and thus the oxygen. And then, oh, is there a crawl space door here? Oh my. Desperate times. Dr. Su Chong, frankly, I'm shocked by your proposal. If we were to modify the structure of our commercial plasmid line as you propose, to have them make the user vulnerable to mental suggestion through pheromones, would we not be able to effectively control the actions of the citizens of Rapture? Free will is the cornerstone of this city. Uh -huh. Thought of sacrificing it, support it. However, we are indeed in a time of war. If Atlas and his bandits have their way, Will they not turn us into slaves? And what will become a free will then? Desperate times 
Call for desperate measures. Oh. That's lovely. This is where we just were. This is the room with the... Uh, Ah, uh, but if we had come in it from this direction. Oh, how spooky. Yes, of course. Because everything in Bioshock is designed to be spooky. Oh, there's a health kit right there. I think I will grab it with my mind. And then say farewell. Take care of yourselves. Uh, hope to see you again next time. I will be live streaming Fallout 4 on Fridays. So you can hang out with me in the chat room and I can hear your comments and respond to them in real time. <laughs> Otherwise, I will read your comments on these videos for Bioshock and of course, Try It Tuesdays. Uh, Halloween falls on a Try It Tuesday and so I'm going to be trying out Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, the PSVR game for Halloween. That should be fun. I don't usually like horror games, so I'm probably going to <laughs> be crapping my pants, but that's fine. Come and crap your pants along with me. Try it Tuesdays are also live streamed. It's just Bioshock that I pre-record because I can't live stream to YouTube or to Twitch. See you next time. Bye!